and welcome to Medical Shorts by Cuter IMG. In this video, I am going to discuss about the diagnostic approach for primary amenorrhea. So by definition, the primary amenorrhea is defined as no menses by age 13 in the absence of secondary sexual characteristics. Another definition of primary amenorrhea is that no menses by age 15 with the presence of secondary sexual characteristics. So if you have a patient who comes to you with a history of primary amenorrhea, so there are three important elements to approach this case. We will start with a history, which is very important. You need to obtain complete detail about the developmental history. Ask the patient about the cyclical abdominal pain because if it's going to be present, it points toward the diagnosis of hemomacra in which there is an accumulation of the blood in the uterus because of imperforate hymen or vaginal sept. Family history is very important. Ask the patient about the age of mother and if the patient has older sister, the age they have achieved the menarche. The second is examination. Look for height, stature, and the weight of the patient. Look for the clues that points toward the diagnosis of syndrome. If the patient has the flat chest, web neck, short stature, so that points toward the diagnosis of Turner syndrome. So look for the clues, okay? The third one is basically investigation in which we perform an ultrasound plus we check FSH level. So the clinical examination plus ultrasound, we have four scenarios, right? So what are those? Number one scenario, by performing the clinical examination and doing ultrasound, the four scenarios are number one, the patient has the breast present and the uterus is absent. That's the scenario number one. The scenario number two is that the breast absent, but the uterus is present. The third scenario is that the patient has the breast absent. Along with that, the uterus is absent as well. The fourth scenario is that the breast is present and the uterus is present as well. So we are going to discuss all of these scenario one by one. So I'm going to start with the scenario number one in which the patient has the breast present but the uterus is absent. So what does it mean? If the patient has the breast, it means the patient has enough estrogen. That's why the patient has the development of the breast. Uterus absent mean uterus is a Mullerian duct derivative. So if the uterus is an absent, it means the patient has Mullerian agenesis or the patient has Mullerian dysgenesis because the uterus fallopian tube, cervix, and upper two-thirds of the vagina are the derivatives of the Mullerian duct. If there is agenesis, so any of the derivative would be absent. So one of the diagnoses is Mullerian agenesis. Another condition which you have to keep in mind when you have a patient who have uterus absent is androgen insensitivity syndrome. In androgen insensitivity syndrome, the patient has the genetic makeup of the male, but the patient have external sex characteristic of the female. 
The patient do not have the uterus. In fact, they have the testes which are undescended. So androgen insensitivity syndrome is basically, they typically raised as a female and they have a gender identity disorder. So any patient who has the uterus absent, you should always think of androgen insensitivity syndrome. Coming to the scenario number two, in which the patient has absent breast, but the patient has the uterus which is present. So what comes into your mind? If the breasts are absent, it means the patient does not have estrogen so there is no development of the breast. It means the gonads are not responding, like ovaries are not producing estrogen. That's why the patient does not have the breast. The Mullerian duct derivative is present, so it means the Mullerian duct anatomy is normal. So only thing that you should think of is gonadal dysgenesis, because the gonads are dysfunctional and the condition which you need to remember is basically the Turner syndrome in which the patient has streak gonads they have streaked in fact non-functional ovaries they have short stature they have webbed neck and they have the flat chest coming to the third scenario in which the patient has the breast which is negative and the uterus which is negative as well so it means the patient has both Mullerian dysgenesis plus the patient has gonadal dysgenesis because both of these are negative the fourth scenario the patient has the breast present and the patient has the uterus present as well so what is this condition? It means the patient has enough estrogen. That's why the patient has the development of the breast and the Mullerian duct derivative like uterus is there. So there is no problem with the Mullerian tract. So it means the patient has some anatomical problem like imperforate hymen or maybe the vaginal septum that does not allow the shedded endometrium to come out. So you should think of imperforate hymen and the vaginal septum. Okay, so now we have to come to another investigation which is basically FSH that is very helpful in making the diagnosis of primary amenorrhea as well. So um, you have to check the level of the FSH and see if it is high or if the level is low. If you have a patient who present to you with a very high level of FSH, so we call that condition as hypergonadotrophic primary amenorrhea. If the patient FSH is low, we call that as hypogonadotropic primary amenorrhea, right? If the patient FSH level are very high, it means there is gonadal failure or gonadal dysfunction and the patient estrogen levels are very low. So the condition in which this happen is known as the Turner's syndrome. On the other hand, if the patient FSH is very low, it means the problem could happen either at the level of the hypothalamus or the problem could be at the level of the pituitary. It means that hypothalamus is not producing GnRH to stimulate the pituitary to produce FSH, right? So what we do is that we give the patient exogenous GnRH and see if the level of FSH comes back to normal or it does not come back to normal. By giving exogenous GnRH, if FSH comes to the normal, it means the problem was at the level of hypothalamus. 
by giving exogenous GnRH, if the level of episode does not come to normal, it means the patient has the problem at the level of the pituitary. So it could be Kellerman syndrome, it could be head trauma, it could be pituitary tumor or pituitary adenoma, okay? So this is how you're going to approach the patient of primary amenorrhea. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to our channel, Tuber IMG, and stay tuned for new video on secondary amenorrhea. And thank you very much.